coming up tonight at 10, we have the latest on a Topeka homicide investigation where a man was found dead due to a gunshot wound early this morning. Plus, we tell you the latest area school to receive fake eclipse glasses and how they plan to deal with the issue. And meteorologist Jeremy Goodwin breaks down your weather forecast for Monday's solar eclipse to ensure you're able to see the phenomenon. Good evening and thank you for joining us for 13 News at 10. I'm Erica Hall. After starting off August with below average temps, we're in a bit of a heating trend right now. Let's head over to meteorologist Jeremy Goodwin in the Weather Center to see how long it will last. Jeremy? Hi, Erica. This has been a hot day across the area. Heat index values made the mid 90s. Right now, even at 10 o'clock at night, heat index values are close to 90 degrees. We haven't seen much of that uh, so far this month, but that high heat index also represents some very high moisture content in the atmosphere, which is fueling some thunderstorms moving our way from Nebraska right now. Uh, seeing heavy rain near Holders, Nebraska, Grand Island, Hastings, and that is moving in our direction. And likely to hear some rumbles of thunder tonight. The severe weather risk is low, but likely to see at least some scattered rain showers in 71. Tomorrow also a chance of storms and 93. The heat index close to 100. I'll have the eight day forecast, including a look at the solar eclipse forecast for Monday in just a few minutes. Erica. Cool. Look at there. Thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to it, Jeremy. <laughs> Police are investigating the city's 18th homicide of the year after a man was found dead behind a garage in central Topeka this morning. 13 Sean Wheat has the latest on the investigation. The body of 44 year old Kenneth Vita was discovered around 8 Saturday morning by someone who found him behind a garage at 15th and Topeka Boulevard. But officers say that's not where he was shot. At this point, appears to have no relation to the location where they've been located. Um, we did find some indicators um, that he was somewhere else just prior to dying. Sturgeon says they found evidence that he was shot somewhere in the 1400 block of Harrison and then walked across the street, collapsed and later died. He says they're talking with witnesses to try and piece together what exactly happened. We've spoken to a few individuals who have been in this area. They've shared some information, but of course they only have tidbits of information. So individuals who know more, we would ask them to call. They cannot say if he died from the gunshot wound until an autopsy is complete. Kansas Department of Correction records show that Vita is a resident of Shawnee County. Sean Wheat, 13 News. Thank you, Sean. Police have not yet released any suspect information. Officers say if you have any info that can help them with their investigation, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 234-0007. Riley County Police are looking for a suspect who robbed a local liquor store Friday night. The robbery took place just past 10 last night at the Classic Wine and Spirits in Manhattan, located at 347 Seth Child Road. The suspect is described as a white or Hispanic man who is approximately 5 foot 7 in average weight. This guy used a handgun and demanded money and left the area on foot with an undisclosed amount of cash and items. If you have any information, you are encouraged to call the Manhattan Riley County Crime Stoppers 539-7777. Topeka police were dispatched to the area of Southeast 6th and Gilmore on reports of aggravated battery, robbery and car theft last night. Officers say a female victim had been parked inside her black 2008 Dodge Caliber when a white Mercury passenger car pulled up beside her. Two white males, one armed with a handgun, got out of the white vehicle and forced her from her car. One suspect is said to be over six feet tall, about 250 pounds, wearing a black shirt, blue jeans, and armed with a black handgun. The other suspect is described as being skinny and seen wearing a multicolored mask. If you have seen them or any of the two vehicles, call Crime Stoppers at 234 0007. Topeka police are also responded to an aggravated robbery in the 2100 block of Southeast 12th. When police arrived on the scene, they found two adult victims had been injured. TPD reports the victims were approached by a group of individuals and an argument ensued, leading to the battery. 23-year-old Thermal Serrano has been charged with aggravated battery, robbery, battery and theft. Again, if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 234-0007. Six police officers found themselves in the line of fire Friday night. Two officers were ambushed in Kissimmee, Florida. Florida. Four others were shot in Jacksonville, Florida, and in western Pennsylvania. Roxana Sabarali has the latest. 
Police in Kissimmee, Florida say when two of their officers responded to a call Friday night in an area known for drug activity, they were shot in what may have been an ambush. Kissimmee Police Chief Jeff O'Dell. It breaks my heart to have to come speak to you tonight about another senseless tragedy. Officer Matthew Baxter was killed. Sergeant Sam Howard died Saturday from his injuries. Everett Glenn Miller was arrested and charged. Later in Jacksonville, Florida, two police officers were shot and wounded. The suspect was killed. Also on Friday night, two Pennsylvania state police troopers were shot outside a grocery store south of Pittsburgh. State police say the troopers returned fire, killing the shooter. One trooper was treated and released. The other is in serious condition. The tragic night for police comes just after the FBI reported that 26 law enforcement officers were killed so far this year as a result of criminal acts. It's getting tough to do the job that we've all sworn to protect and uphold and, and, uh, and, and maintain livable neighborhoods, keep people safe. And, and uh, you know, these senseless acts are going on. The Kissimmee officers are believed to be the 27th and 28th killed this year. The FBI says last year, 66 officers were murdered, the highest in a decade. Most of those fatalities were caused by firearms. Roxana Saberi for CBS News, New York. In several major cities across the country, thousands took part in solidarity marches calling for Confederate monuments to be torn down. A woman died one week ago when a self-proclaimed white supremacist plowed into a crowd of counter-protesters in Virginia. Kenneth Craig reports from Boston. From Dallas to Houston and in Memphis. Hundreds of people rally, calling for Confederate monuments to be removed. We are here to protect the children that are being tormented by these white supremacists. In Boston, right-wing activists gathered for a free speech rally, but they were outnumbered by counter-protesters. Army veteran Stephen McGrath says he fought to protect free speech. Everybody has different views, and if you take it to the violence level, then you lose your argument all 100%. Tom Gallagher was among those promoting inclusion and tolerance. Uh, I ex accept free speech, but that's not free speech, that's hate speech. The rally in protest was mostly peaceful and a dramatic contrast to a week ago when hundreds of white nationalists violently clashed with counter protesters in Virginia. Heather Heyer was killed when a white supremacist allegedly rammed his car into a crowd of people. Boston police did not want a repeat of what happened in Charlottesville, so they intentionally kept the two sides here separated and they limited the free speech event to just two hours. Did a good job. 99.9% .9 of the people here for the right reason, and that's to fight bigotry and hate. Several people were injured, including this man who police removed from the rally. Police say more than 30 arrests were made. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Boston. Students at Wanamaker Elementary will have to share eclipse glasses after the school found out that the glasses they received were fakes. The principal there says that the school is fairly certain they will be able to get at least 200 legitimate glasses in time for Monday. That means each student will not get their own pair. Students will instead be rotated outside during the most visible moments of the eclipse. The school has decided to count absences as excused for Monday if parents wish to keep their child home and view the eclipse together. The Topeka Public Library was holding an Eclipse Glasses giveaway, but they ran out of glasses before the event even began. Library officials told 13 News more than 500 vehicles were lined up by 7 this morning. The event wasn't set to start until 9, though, but the traffic was backed up all the way to 10th and Boswell, causing them to start early. All glasses were actually gone by 8 o'clock. You may notice many main streets and highways are already, you're already seeing an increase of traffic due to tourists being getting into position for the solar eclipse on Monday. Across the path, path of totality, there are many events drawing huge crowds, but officials want to remind eclipse viewers that planning ahead is key to staying safe. Do not stop along the roadway to view the eclipse. Cars are all parked along the highway will be asked to move to avoid accidents. Do remember, though, to fill up your gas tank in advance. Many of the best places to view the eclipse are in rural areas where gas stations are few and far between. And also remember to join WIBW and CBS News Monday for team coverage of the eclipse. We begin with 13 news this morning from 5 to 7 a.m. from viewing sites around the area. 
Our midday news will begin at 11 a.m. with a look at crowds and traffic. CBS will be interrupting Young and the Restless and airing Bold and the Beautiful at 11.30. And beginning a special report at noon, CBS and WIBW will follow the path of totality across the country and through northeast Kansas. Then join us to wrap up the day's events on our news at 4.30, 5, 6, and 10. A top Democratic lawmaker says he's joining the crowded Kansas governor race. The House Majority Leader Jim Ward of Wichita announced his candidacy today. Republican Governor Sam Brownback is serving his second term and is expected to leave office early to join the Trump administration. Ward was elected to the Kansas House of Representatives back in 2002 and is in the ranking Democrat in the House. Other Democrats in the race include former Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer and former State Representative Josh Savady. Does, fa does family structure influence a child's gender identity and the warnings for teenage contact wearers? John Don Champion has some of the week's top health stories. The CDC is warning young contact lens wearers to adopt healthier habits. Scientists say a majority of adolescents are either sleeping with their lenses in or swimming with them, habits that increase the chance of a serious eye infection. Taking estrogen therapy vaginally does not increase the risk for cardiovascular disease, cancer, and other diseases for postmenopausal women. Scientists at the University of California studied data from 50 to 79-year-old women from 40 U.S. clinical centers. They found those using vaginal estrogen therapy did not have more health issues compared to women who did not use any type of estrogen. A new study finds family structure has little influence on how a child's sense of gender develops. Researchers at the University of Kentucky studied 106 families headed by lesbian, gay, and heterosexual parents and observed the toys children preferred during their preschool years. The study study concluded that having both a male and female role model is not necessary for facilitating typical gender development among adopted children. Those are some of the week's top health stories. Don Champion, CBS News, Dallas. The total solar eclipse phenomenon is getting a lot of little kiddos interested in astrology. Coming up, we'll show you how the lessons some kids are learning about the eclipse in the hopes that they pursue a career in science in the future. And later in sports, see which Chiefs quarterback stood out in tonight's preseason game.